Next on the topic to kind of get, bring things back around to what I was talking about, alcohol, uh, Drinkers Like Me by Adrian Charles. So I watched this documentary the other day, um, yesterday uh, night actually, called Drinkers Like Me uh, with Adrian Charles. Adrian Charles, um, if you're familiar with him, was the ex-presenter of Match of the Day or Match of Day 2. I'm sure one of them anyway. Um, very, it's kind of a permanent fixture on the BBC. You kind of see him all the time. He's got the kind of like scrunched up, like, you know, uh, annoyed face. He, uh, he supports West Brom. Probably one of the only kind of like pundits on TV that actually puts, that supports a club that isn't, you know, well known or whatever. Um, so he made this a brilliant documentary, right? Um, analyzing, kind of like delving deep into the British psyche when it comes to alcohol. And there's a lot of interesting conclusions in the in the uh, in the in the show that I'm sure a lot of us has kind of spoken about over a beer or in a house party sometime. So basically, the whole story of the documentary uh, centers around Adrian Towles um, realizing that he is drinking I don't know ten times over the legal limit, over the recommended limit of drinking, right? So you know the kind of like units measurements and shit that they do, right? I don't really I don't really uh, calculate by that way, but because I usually just abstain for days upon days on end. But, you know, for those people that do drink or who drive and stuff, I think those kind of units are quite handy to kind of realize where you are. So he kind of um, went in, went on a journey, talking to various people along the journey about um, drinking and uh, it's a societal kind of grip with some people. And it's something I've thought about a lot because I generally finish work quite late. When I come out, I finish like 8.30, right? So when I come out of work, I'm seeing the real people, the real OGs who are out drinking because, you know, six seven is like you know the casual people drinking after work having a grabbing a quick pint or maybe catching up with somebody who works around the corner who's work at another company you know it's loose but if you've seen the people in the pubs at 8 30 on a monday or on a tuesday do you know those are the real ogs so i've long question i've long kind of um contemplated yeah, or kind of just thought about it thinking like i wonder what that lifestyle must be like right because i guess i have an advantage or i have a slight blessing that i grew up in a fairly christian household for the most part of my life right from like zero to 21 right i grew up in a christian household so i only had my first drink maybe when i was like 19 i'd say 19 20 i had my first drink so by that time i developed a habit of not drinking right so um when i did start drinking i will, it was easy for me to kind of like um, not drink at home because I lived at home with a Christian parents, conservative parents who would never accept me having alcohol in the house. Number two, because I just didn't have a, I didn't have a background of drinking. It was easy for me to kind of like go without drinking for days on end and not feel <clears throat> that um and not feel um not feel kind of itchy, not get the kind of the you know the the drinking itch that I need to kind of you know um serve it in any sort of way. So I'm lucky in that respect, but I was always kind of interested in the idea that these people would be, uh, you know, drinking every single day of, out, after work, like that constant need to have alcohol. And most of it isn't the fact that they want to have alcohol. It's more so the fact that you want to talk to a friend after work. Where do you go? Right. You've only got two options. You go to a cafe, right? Um, a, a big chain cafe, because those ones are going to be open at that time, um, like a Starbucks, a Pret and Eat or whatever it may be called. Or you go to like a, a kind of like, quote unquote, boutique um cafe shop like um what's the one that does the nitro coffees anyway you know the few of those kind of shops there's few there's only a few options you go to if you go to a cafe you go to a pub so when you go to a pub or a bar you can't exactly sit there and drink juices right you have to just drink an alcohol you have to right because the surroundings kind of like um call for it so by the time you know by the time you realize it you're already like three pints in and it's only 7 p.m so i kind of always kind of had sympathy for that idea but also had like an uh, thinking like doesn't it get a little bit tiring drinking so much alcohol every week? And doesn't don't you lose the the satisfaction, the taste, the niceness of having a drink when you're just always drinking it? I never really got it. I never really understood it. But having watched the documentary, um, it kind of makes a lot of sense that most of the drinking is to do with the hanging out part of it. It's to do with the society side of it. Most of the people that were interviewed in this Agent Charles documentary said that they felt as if like if they didn't drink, they wouldn't be fun to hang around with, which is quite sad to hear like adults say this. Not like young kids grown adults saying they don't think there'll be as much fun like most of their funnest moments most of their uh, most giggliest nights have been like after a few pints or someone's fallen off a chair or someone's rambled on about a topic that no one has any clue what they're talking about those are usually the funnest times i know for me i you know having hanged out with my friends some of the best times have been when we kind of were high or drinking you know those were kind of the funnest times just rambling about life and loving each other and shit they're always kind of good occasions but it, the consistent drinking, the consistent daily drug use, I just don't think is sustainable. I don't think it's something everyone needs to do. But again, I don't, I just, 
I just don't know if you're if the people that have, who do that are able to kind of pull back. I don't think there's a middle ground. I don't think they exist. I think or maybe there is a middle. Maybe maybe people like me do it. Maybe more people like me do exist. Maybe there's like everyday drinkers, people like me who drink on your on the weekends, right? And then people that don't drink. That's the three levels that exist, right? But it's very hard to go from like people that drink every day to go to the middle to do like me and drink only on the weekends. But I think it's easier for me to go to abstaining. It's quite simple to do that because. I've realized over time, especially after going to a few parties sober or being sober for like a month and being in Berlin when I did the um, sober January, um, I've realized that I can't, well, I've not realized, I've knew for a while, but I know that within that environment, like the Berlin environment, which is kind of extra charged, like people are fully, fully on it, really raring to go, that I can be sober and still have a good time. So it's not necessarily a drug thing, not necessarily a drinking thing. Um, it's more so do i want to be in a bar or a club if i'm sober anyway and probably not i'd prefer not to be but if i have to be there to, to catch up with a friend because that's the only place they're going to be at then i don't mind i'm not going to be the person that's going to um curtail all the plans and force everyone to go to a restaurant when no one wants to eat right if, if, if everyone wants to go to a bar or a club i'll come along no problem but i'm not going to stay until four so the documentary was quite sober in that respect. Um, Adrian Charles, towards the end, kind of figures out that, you know, although, he's, he, although he might have a drinking problem, to completely cut a drinking completely might, might not be a good option for him. So he decides to kind of like cut, um, kind of cut down a lot. And then I think when, by the time he has his last pint at the end of the show, spoiler alert, um, I think he's down to drinking one, one drink a week or something like that. Or don't know, first drink in a week. So it's kind of where I am, where you only kind of drink on the weekends. And I have a, honestly, I think it's a lot more satisfying. I don't know for any, anyone else, but I think... Maybe for those people that look forward to the weekend, I think maybe it's tied into that. The people that kind of don't like what they do and they're always looking forward to Saturday. Maybe the kind of constantly drinking kind of maybe numbs you to the dullness of your job, right? So then by the time Wednesday or Thursday comes along, it kind of you can kind of get another second win and you can feel like you kind of can go and conquer the world or conquer the weekend. But I think for me, because I'm so at ease with working and I don't, um, I've not tied, I've not, I've not, I've not kind of linked having a job with my identity. I have a lot of things going on on the outside that allow me to carve my own identity, allow me to do, allow me to express myself creatively and to kind of keep my brain occupied. I don't necessarily feel the need to numb myself during a, during a week. Now, I'm not saying everyone is numbing themselves when they're drinking alcohol, but personally for me, I don't feel the numb myself. I know when I have had jobs that have been really shit, I have been a bit more off the rails outside of work. I, I've, I think there's no coincidence about that. Anytime I've, anytime I've been more proactive outside of work whether it's working now or doing extracurricular activities such as recording this podcast i feel a lot more fulfilled so i don't need to drink as much or do as much new drugs but then when i'm not doing those kind of things i have to replace them with those drinks and drugs so maybe those people in the documentary are the same sort of vein they're in that kind of low period where you're com- a lot of the people agent charles are interviewing were sort of like similar age to him middle-aged people you know uh, 35 and upwards you know in that kind of weird low stage where you've got a job that you like but you just keep it just to keep the lights on um and that's basically it um you can't bother to keep moving around so you're going to keep the job and then you're going to just like numb the, and you know what you're doing you're fairly co- competent at your job anyway it doesn't require all your mental capabilities so you can kind of ring it in and sort of like do it kind of hungover and drunk but for me personally knowing how i am when i drink knowing how i am when i go out I couldn't sustain having a career. I couldn't sustain trying to carve my own entrepreneurial journey or trying to create my own business on the side. I couldn't do it um, always with that kind of like fog of alcohol. Personally, for me, I just couldn't do it. I don't think it's it's something that I could do in the long term. Um, but again, the documentary was very, very illuminating. I highly recommend you check it out. I'm going to link it in the show notes below. Adrian Charles, um, uh, Drinkers Like Me. I think it was, it's on the BBC, but it's on YouTube too. A small link of it so you can check it out. Really, really, a really incredible documentary. And I credit to Adrian Charles for being so vulnerable. Again, putting his, putting himself out there. Because I know as guys, or as, or as drinkers anyway, as people that like to have a good time, you do tend to give, you tend to, you do tend to lie to yourself, right? And tell yourself these um f- these stories um that don't actually add up right that you don't drink that much they only go out on the weekends i only do drugs at 7 p.m you do you tell yourself these weird tales i don't necessarily um kid anyone else but yourself right Maiden charles was in re- really really upfront. he really kind of like laid it out there and, and said the truth really um and kind of put himself out there for the benefit of the viewers um, and it's a really incredible documentary. Um, I hope he ends up doing a lot more documentaries. Maybe not on the sort of drinking overall, um, uh, but I think, yeah, I think he's a really good documentarian or presenter of that kind of format. He did it really, really well, and I highly recommend you check that out.